Hello and welcome to this episode of the CoLab podcast from our studios in Clearwater, Florida. I am Executive Director Christina Baker and I am so excited to share today's guest with you. So let's jump on in. Today we're chatting with Ronnie Ford. Ronnie is a psychic and natural born healer. She assists people in connecting themselves to their highest potential by clearing and aligning energy centers according to the information she intuitively receives from the body's energy. In conjunction with this, she psychically reads your energy field, often putting into words what your energy is harboring. So you can consciously release energetic holding patterns keeping you stuck. Private energy healing sessions are also very beneficial to those requiring surgery. Attuning one's energy to the intention of surgery and preparing the chakras for this opening of the energy field offers a powerful template pre-operatively for advanced healing post-operatively. She teaches group yoga therapy in several venues locally in Dunedin, as well as here at the CoLab Studios in Clearwater, Florida. In her yoga classes, you can expect to be introduced to her intuitive skills as well as provide yourself individual healing in a group setting. The reason why I wanted to have Ronnie on the podcast is so that I could introduce and educate our listeners on what a healing session looks like and feels like to those of us who are new to this, quote, woo-woo stuff. I will get into my own experience a bit later in the podcast, but first, let's get to know a bit about our guest. Welcome, Ronnie Ford. Thank you. I am very excited, and I feel like every podcast host always says that. I'm so excited to have you here today, but I am genuinely excited to have you here today. So thank you for agreeing to come on. You're welcome. Thank (laughs) you. I'm excited too. All right. So tell us a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Poughkeepsie, New York, and um, lived there for, went to high school there and college, uh, high school there, and um, and then I moved to Connecticut to go to college. I was a registered nurse. I went to nursing school there at the University of Hartford in Hartford, Connecticut, and then um, lived in the Virgin Islands for 17 years and um, just moved from there to Dunedin, Florida four <laughs> years ago. Well, you just encapsulated your whole life. There we go. Thank you. We're done. Okay. Very good. <laughs> um, okay. So let me just rewind a little bit. You went to nursing school. What got you interested in that? Mostly from the healing aspect Um to be able to help people. And I did like science. So I really enjoyed the science of the classes. And um, so, but after really, after just to get right in there, because afterwards I didn't really, uh, that, that, that field became a little challenging for me. I really would rather have just like sat there next to the patient and talked to them or, you know, help them, uh, be a whole person. <laughs> and there was just a lot of medication that people was, you know, were on at the hospital. So that started to rub me the wrong way. Right. Yeah. So definitely geared towards more natural things, natural healing um, options uh, in your, mm-hmm. where did that come from in you going that route? Um, so, okay. So, yeah. So I, um, when I was age nine till I was 11 years old, I was in an asthmatic children's foundation. Um, I had very severe asthma from six months old. And, um, so my, the doctor told my, my dad that if she doesn't get incarcerated, she'll die. So my dad asked me, if we could put you in a place for two years and you could feel better, would you go? And I said, yep. (laughs) So I went. 
And um, there they, I lived with, I think it was like 11 other children in, in Austining, New York. And uh, so, but the thing was, when you had an asthma attack, they treated you with medication and drugs, but they also had you go to like physical therapy and they had you go to a psychologist. So they were taking the mental part of it as well as the, as the you know, physical medicine part of it. And, but it was there that I just really learned that I have control over my breathing. I have control over my body. And, uh, and I was able to just start helping myself. So that's, that's kind of, that's yeah. amazing to learn that young too, um, from an asthmatic. I mean, mm -hmm. and to be empowered. Yeah. That young, too. So I see why the natural inclination then towards any healing um, career would make sense for you. Yeah. That was a powerful uh, a learning session. <laughs> yeah. 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 So after nursing kind of didn't really feel like the right fit for you, then what? where'd you go after that? Uh, so... Uh, I, I'm and in the nursing field, I was in like uh, staff development and infection control stuff. And but then my daughter was born when I was working as a nurse, and uh, so I had time to stay home. And then my son was born, and then so uh, there was um, there, and I was always an athlete, so I always really enjoyed being in my body. Uh, but there was a bookstore, there was a signing of a book by a yoga teacher in Madison, Connecticut, Beryl Birch. And, and I thought, oh, I'm going to go to that book signing. And it was there that like, I, was, I just met her and she was talking about yoga. And I was like, whoa, that's it. So that was like about when my son was born. So it was probably 27 years ago that I, then I found the yoga and then I, I started to do like uh, Tai Chi and just I started working with energy and I was like, oh, th this is so cool. <laughs> so that's kind of how it's just started to spark in me something and probably the, the natural born healer part of myself was really resonating to this forms of exercise and, and, and movement that could influence your energy and change things. Mm -hmm. So you became then a yoga instructor? Yep. I became a yoga instructor and I've been teaching for 23 years with that. And um, that, that, that was cool because that was just when I could start putting my hands on people and starting to see that I was transferring energy to them through different poses. And, um, and, and that's really, think how it kind of evolved. Mm-hmm. And then I had a Thai yoga studio in um, in Madison, Connecticut, where I taught yoga, and and uh, and then I taught at the uh, in the Virgin Islands. I had a Thai yoga massage um, studio, and that was all about energy again, stretching and just moving energy, and just using my body as a leveraging system to help people open. And I, I just, I was just like, I just was like, this is great. Yeah. So after taking. Uh, First of all, I'm very new to yoga, and mm -hmm. you were the first instructor mm -hmm. besides YouTube that I've <laughs> dealt with. And um, I can say that from my perspective as, as a relative newbie, I don't know if – I'm going to guess that other instructors don't operate in the same way that you do, but to have that um, scientific background and that – RN degree really helps you communicate what it is that you're actually doing with your body, which again helps you connect to your body. Mm -hmm. So when you are doing certain stretches and you're twisting certain ways and you're you're saying things like fanning the ribs, I mean, that mm -hmm. is such a a good image to, okay. you know, to to have that in your mind, you know, when you're stretching and you're reaching your hand over your head and your that whole side is opening up. Um, 
So I love it. Um, I have learned so much, and yeah, I get. I'm I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk to me about when in St. John you had a yoga massage, and what else did you say? It was a yoga and Thai massage. Yoga and Thai massage. Okay, and um, how did the energy healing then start? Was it there? Yeah, pretty much it okay. was. It was there in the Virgin Islands because um, I just started to, um, number one, really to realize that, that the way that I was doing things was uh, a little too rough for me structurally. Like that was, it was to, to move like big bodies around and stretch them on the floor and stuff. I was like <laughs> thinking is this the best use of my energy and Mm. am I able to, you know, give the best use of myself to that person? And then I honestly, I started like reading people's minds and I started like seeing people, okay, this kind of whoever's into this or not, but seeing people like sitting on the couch, like loved ones sitting on the couch and stuff. And I was like, and then I, I was like, okay, well, who? Someone's here sitting on the couch, and I'm like, they said dad or something, and it was resonating with people. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, this is cool. So I'm getting information from other realms. So you've discovered besides another just gift. the physical. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me ask you this again because I'm I'm new to this. So is is energy healing and Reiki, is that one in the same? Or can you talk a little bit about that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, the energy healing, uh, for me, I feel that it's more, and for me, the, the, I feel that it's more, what I'm doing is I'm guided by your energy field to heal what needs to be healed in your body. Um, so I'm not really channeling up the excess energy out of your body. And like Reiki uses symbols a lot. Like I'm not involved with symbols at all. And I'm not channeling up the energy back to the universe from you. So you feel better. That's more what Reiki is. Like the energy work is I work with the incarnated soul. So I'm helping your energy expand and release so that you can hold more level of energy to move forward on your life's path and your life's journey. So we all come in here with lessons that we want to learn and lessons that we want to accomplish. So by moving the energy and clearing it and holding it for and opening it to hold higher vibrations, people can move forward in their life towards their missions. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was a really good descriptor. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my own experience with you. Um, I've been two times. Mm -hmm. And again, I've never been to anyone else for this type of healing. And the first time I went to your place, I had no idea what to expect. So we sat down and we chit-chatted for a little bit. And then um, we went into your room and I laid down on, I assume it was a massage table. Yep. Okay. And then there was a blanket put over me. And Mm -hmm. then you came around and put crystals um, like around my feet and my legs and my head. Mm -hmm. And then you put two crystals in my hands. When you did that, were those specific crystals for specific parts of the body? Uh, not, not necessarily for me, why I really enjoy it so much was, is that when I get into your energy, I kind of look at the crystals and they just say, mm. take this one and put it here okay. like, and take this one and put it here. Some of them have specific meanings like smoky quartz, for example, I'll put that maybe below the navel and above the pubic bone because that helps people stay in their bodies. Mm. Uh, and then, you know, maybe if I put an amethyst up by the head, because the violet color from the amethyst is representative of the crown chakra, but it may be that it, it may give me clues that uh, that maybe you're experiencing like rumors from people or it, they have several meanings. I don't use a lot of crystals. I pretty much stick to almost the same ones because okay. I've just learned 
Mm-hmm. We, we work together, the yeah. crystals and I. That's cool. Most of the time in the hand, like I might put like a black tourmaline and maybe a, a, um, a clear quartz. And depending on what side I feel that you need those colors on, uh, those are mostly for just to give you something to hold in the hand. And the hand has chakras in and of itself. So it's to help you kind of open up your own energy channels in okay. your hands and just, you know, kind yeah. of give you a safety thing, something to yeah. hold on to. Yeah. No, I yeah. definitely, I felt that. I felt that. Good. Um, also in that first session, so lay down, blanket over, crystals around, and you started, I believe, by putting your hands, so I'm laying on my back, and you started with putting your hands on my knees or my shins, mm-hmm. um, and just like gentle pressure there, mm-hmm. and it was just quiet, right? Yeah. So what's going on at that point for you? Yeah, so I'm grounding your body and feeling what's going on in your body. I'm feeling the energy of your body. Is your body calm? Is your energy, uh, you know, just like all over the place? Is is the energy moving fast? Does it need to be picked up? Mm -hmm. And then oftentimes I'll go behind the knee Mm -hmm. because that's the central nervous central, like grand central station. They call that of the of the energy channels behind the knees. There's a lot of meridians that run back there. So I'm charging those up with my fingertips to get the energy to loosen up and to communicate. I'm starting to communicate my energy to your energy Mm -hmm. so that the, you know, the communication channels are opening up. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and then I, I'm going to say I don't really remember order of mm-hmm. of things after that, but, um, you know, we may have little brief conversations, a little, mm-hmm. he, you know, here and there, and are you feeling something here? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think the second time, obviously, I was a little more prepared for what happens, and yep. um, I think probably I was a little bit more relaxed. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like we chatted a little bit more that time, Mm -hmm. which I liked. I liked that. Um, And definitely during my session, you were clearly getting messages Mm -hmm. and um, some were not related to people. Um, Some were related to my body. Right. Yeah. And some were did have to do with people and like my grandparents who yeah. have passed on came yeah. through. Oh yeah, with the shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. My grandmother was a shoe model yes. and she was showing shoes and that was so cool. Yeah. Uh yeah. So here in lies another one of your gifts. Yeah. Um, and I know that it's all connected and, and you can talk about this better than I can, but would you mind? speaking on that as well. Yeah, the um the so I take I took some psychic development classes uh when I moved to Dunedin and um I started to just get information from people on the other side and the lady that was teaching the class she's like well that's natural because you're re- you're you know you're elevated up so high in the session vibrationally mm-hmm. that you're starting to pick up messages from other passed down loved ones and so I was like oh, okay that's really neat and um that's a that's a tricky part but I love that part mm-hmm. that's really one of the things that I really enjoy because it just it makes people smile it gives people uh a chance to, uh, you know, that ancestral healing thing that people do, right? When they say that every generation holds more energy in the body, every Whoa. generation, which is really interesting. Wow. So sometimes I have loved ones come through me and put their hands on top of me and start to heal the people for particular, like, like heart. Let's say if your family has heart issues and people just kept passing on those, they might come through me and, and, and it's not creepy at all. It doesn't bother me at all. It's all for the highest good of everybody involved and put, put, put my hands, uh, their hands on top of my hands to, to heal the heart. And I'll, I'll just be like, 
you know, that's one of your ancestors, because I, I still stay focused on the energy healing. So mm -hmm. I try not to get lost too much in that uh, information from the past down loved ones, but they will bring a message through like, like with the mm -hmm. shoes or whatever, mm -hmm. had to do with maybe something. Yeah. Like, right. Like put bigger shoes on, like <laughs> be, be, you know, expand, explore. Like, yeah. so that information is so fun for people most of the time. Yeah. Sometimes they can be like, oh, I don't want to talk to that person. And I'll be like, well, but they want to know that you're okay so that they can move on in the pa in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to kind of think of it as it's still you're in a relationship with this person. And it's really kind of both your job still to alter that relationship mm -hmm. if you're willing to. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's... Yeah. It's really, it's really cool. Yeah. So as you move through the session and through, you know, different parts of the body, um, I think the second time you felt something in my thigh and you were kind of grabbing my yeah. leg and like, you know, what's going on in the, in the thigh, you know, I couldn't feel it. Something was catching you, oh, okay. you know, or I didn't know anything was going on, but something was tipping you off. And Correct. so we worked through that. Um, so who knows what that was, but, yeah, you know, um, and then you, so most of the time I kept my eyes closed, but a few mm -hmm. times I opened them and, you know, I can hear you doing some breath work in there. So mm -hmm. Do you mind talking about that, the breath work that you're doing while? Yeah. Okay. I, I really like that breath work. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it <laughs> freaks people out a little bit, but I just find that sometimes when I'm using my hands and I'm expanding energy, if I just go, yeah, it it just dissipates it okay. and it just sends it through the field in a way that nothing else can do. Okay. And so that's how I just really started with the breathing. I'm not doing that, you know, inhale, take the people's energy and right. breathe out and get rid of it. I'm not doing that. I'm expanding the energy and then, like I said, just adding a little bit of wind to it or a little bit of breath to it to just gently tell it it's time to go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. And then at the end, you kind of, you know, take both hands open wide and you're almost like pushing the energy out of the room, really. I mean, at, at the very end, <laughs> you're – so I'm guessing that it's off of me and then you're getting it out of your room. Is that correct? I know what you're talking about. Okay. No, and I'm not trying to get it out of my okay. room. I'm actually getting it out of your energy field. Okay. The gotcha. end of your energy field, out of your auric field. Okay. The last layer of your auric field. I know sometimes I think like, <laughs> I know that sometimes I know it's like, maybe I need a bigger room, but <laughs> I, I don't because it. I'm just, I'm at the edge of your auric field. Like okay. I might be in the seventh or eighth layer of your auric field at the level of one of your chakras. Mm. And I'm just getting more information still. I'm gathering information and then just, uh, just allowing that information to clear as I gather it from your energy field. And sometimes I talk about it, sometimes I don't. If yeah. I feel someone super duper stressed, I just walk the field sometimes, walk around their auric field, and I won't say anything because I, I know that they probably don't want to, maybe they're not ready to receive the words of it. They just need the energy removed. Yeah. And and I'm just guided by their energy field again to mm -hmm. either to either talk and, and my guides or talk about it or just mm -hmm. just get it out. So speaking of of removing that and mm -hmm. you know we we talk about oh I got the weight on the weight of the world on my shoulders you know the right. first time that I went to you for a, a session I really didn't feel particularly stressed nothing was going on but when I got up I certainly felt lighter Cool. Right. So when yes. I walked home, we're, we're two houses away from each other. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and I went on my long walk home. We're in the hood. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it was noticeably lighter, definitely in my shoulders, which is where I carry a lot of my stress. Perfect. And I know a lot of women do tend to do that is carry that in the shoulders and mm -hmm. such. The second time I was definitely a little bit more stressed, had a, had a little bit more going on. Um, mm hmm. 
in in my realm. And I can tell you that again, I walked over. I could feel that time. I could feel the weight on me when I walked into the okay. session. And when I left, it was, I mean, I just can't explain it other than that. Right. Just feeling lighter, definitely stuff was taken off of me. Perfect. So I, my own experience in my, um, lack of experience in this world, I can say it felt like um, a therapy session in some ways. Okay, cool. It felt like a massage in some ways. Okay. Uh, it felt like connecting to my past in, in a positive okay. way. Cool. And at the end, though, both times definitely felt just peaceful and calm and I slept really good both times. Perfect. So Perfect. I don't know how to explain it scientifically or right. uh, anything else, but I can tell you that having this experience is, it's definitely doing something. Um, good. So I thank you. Perfect. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's my pleasure. Um. So I know you are relatively new to Dunedin. Mm -hmm. uh, you moved here right before COVID, did you say? Or yeah, during? Yeah, 2019. Yeah, okay. So right before it all hit. June, yeah. And you did a lot of stuff online, a lot of online healings, mm -hmm. uh, and you still do yes, some do. of that. Mm -hmm. So what's the best way for people to get in contact with you if they want a session or more information? Uh, well, I know I'm a phone number person yeah. or an email person. Great. So you can call me, you can email me. Um, and yeah, those are Instagram I'm on there. But but really, if you want a session, you can call or just okay. give me an email. Do you are you comfortable giving your phone number out on yeah, here? I okay. Am, All right. So what's your phone number? Okay. 340-626. Nine six four two. All right, one more time. Three four zero six two six nine six four two. Awesome. And I know you're on Facebook also, yes. Ronnie Under Ronnie Ford. Ronnie Ford. R O N N I F O R D. And then uh, I teach online for myself too, though, and and then here with you at the collab on Wednesday nights at six o'clock. Yeah, awesome. So those are the things. But the best way to call you for a private session would be your phone number. Yeah, or, or you can Facebook email me. Email. You can email okay. me. Right. Okay. That, the email would be Ronnie Ford Y E H at gmail dot com. One more time. Yeah, Ronnie R O N N I F O R D Y E H at gmail dot com. Awesome. Anything else you want to say before we wrap her on up? I don't think so. All right. Thank you, so, Ronnie, for being here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. To our guests and our listeners, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this session, please subscribe and click the notification bell to catch our next episode. If you're interested in hosting a podcast or having us interview you, please visit us at the-co-lab.com or give us a call at 727-914-9888.